My name is Tomer. I'm the field CTO for Quali. Today we're going to talk about bridging this uh, skills gap uh, around infrastructure and infrastructure automata automation. And I think I really want to start with a quick exercise for you guys. Take 10 seconds, count the people in the company that are doing DevOps, platform, or infrastructure today in the company and try to calculate the ratio between those people to the people they are serving. So think about that five people in the DevOps team serving 500 um, people out there in the development, engineering, QA departments. And with that thought, let's start and talk about the infrastructure automation. So um, everything starts with manual stuff, right? We need something in the cloud. We need something on-prem. It might be just a VM. It might need to be a Lambda function. And we are starting designing, building, architecting everything slowly, slowly, manually. In some point, we understand that it's, it's hard. It's not consistent. It's not stable. Um, it's, it lacks really a lot of standardization features, right? It's hard to tag everything exactly the same if you're doing it manually. Now, the next stop in this maturity path toward uh, infrastructure automation is start to automate part of those tasks. It might be with CloudFormation, Terraform, Pulumi. It doesn't really matter. But what we see out there is a lot of companies has these islands, islands of automation where different teams, different departments want to do automation. But it is different. All right? And eventually, business processes cannot be achieved when you have a lot of different automation tools uh, that need to somehow interact together. It's really hard to, to build that. Uh, to work together. And eventually, we have silos processes again. The next level of infrastructure automation is what we really all want to see in our companies. It's frictionless. Developers get whatever they want, when they want. DevOps teams, platform teams, really provides self-service, provides fast, rapid, secure, standardized uh, infrastructure to whoever wants that very quickly. And Somewhere in the future, uh, we are talking about application uh, that will be somehow defining the infrastructure themselves. So we won't really going to need to think about uh, infrastructure that much. Now, most of the companies we are working with are somewhere in those oranges uh, lines. All right. So a lot of the enterprises are still doing some automation with different tools. It is very. Uh, very hard, a lot of friction between different teams. And what we are really wanted to ask ourselves is how we can take those teams and move them up the, in this maturity module toward the frictionless world. Now, before we dive into the, the real gaps and the, the hard parts, let's talk about what's slowing us down. Now, 2014, 16, 18, we talked about DevOps uh, adoption. We are still kind of in there. The fact you have Terraform doesn't mean the culture in the company is doing DevOps. Doesn't mean all the processes are uh, in a DevOps manner. And with that, we also see things like legacy infrastructure that's really holding us back because it's not just AWS serverless, uh, RDS managed services, whatever. We also have on-prem stuff. We also have VM workloads. So things are still slowing us down and makes it hard to really uh, work in the right velocity. Now, thinking about DevOps team, platform teams, just take a look at the number of things they need to do throughout the SDLC uh, processes, regardless of what the application really is, regardless of what the infrastructure really is. We have the inner loop for the developer. We want to make sure the developer can develop super fast, right? test very fast, debug very fast. We have the outer loop for everything that happens after the merge to the main branch. Uh, we need to make sure we have uh, drift detection. We need to make sure secrets are managed in the right way. We want to make sure that policies and cost control is in place. And it's all the DevOps or platform teams work, regardless, again, of the number of microservices, the number of infrastructure components, regardless of what the application really is. So what's stopping DevOps teams from really evolving and, and get to a frictionless world? And I think that mainly three things. So one, complexity. In some point, applications, infrastructure become too complex. It's hard, right? We have scalability uh, um, issues or challenges. 
And it's really hard to provide infrastructure uh, fast enough to, that, that can really address this complexity. Now, what we see always is development tools that were built in-house, some scripts, some uh, fast, uh, fast utilities that then being pushed to staging and production. And they're not really meant for that. They're meant for development. So taking those tools, trying to push them out, that's usually something that really uh, holds you back. The, the third thing is, as I said, islands of automation. So way too many tools, way too many ways to invoke them. Sometimes it's from the developer station. Sometimes it's from Jenkins. Sometimes it's a script that no one, no one really knows what's, what's going on in, in there. Now, remember that exercise from a few minutes ago? This is usually what we see. We have a lot of users up there. Maybe I, I can give one example. Uh, but, but a lot of users out there, people that building automation, usually it's, it's less than 10x. And then the infrastructure experts in the, in the company are really few. I'm working right now with a customer. Up there, we have 11,000 developers. Down there, we have 15 people that can actually build good quality, secure, certified Terraform files. All right? So just think about how much work these guys need to do, how hard it is to provide con con consistent, stable environments for 11,000 people. And honestly, it's not a unique number. Usually, we see the 10x ratio between those layers. All right? So what, what's the result of that funnel, this, this bottleneck? Usually, we see super long wait times for infrastructure for developers. Even if it's just an S3 bucket, it might take hours. It might take weeks. It might, be, might take a few minutes, but maybe a few minutes is more than what's acceptable. It's really hard to, um, to keep everyone happy in an environment that's full of friction between the layers underneath and, and the developers. It's really, really hard. People are not happy, and eventually they might go away. And what we really see a lot is that if you don't get environment right there when you need it, the next time you will get, you will get something, you're never, never going to let go. So if it's just a VM and you waited two weeks for that VM, that's it. That's going to be your VM for your five, six, ten years in the company. Why is that bad? You can all imagine, I'm sure. So we've talked about how hard it is to provide environments in a consistent way. We've talked about the, the, the fact that there are so many uh, so few people that can really deliver secure infrastructure to the masses. And what we, Quali, provides is this notion of blueprints. All right? Think about a way to take all the different automations from this islands of automation world, compose them all together. It might be the infrastructure's code blocks. It might be the application configurations. It doesn't really uh, uh, important if you're doing Terraform, Helm, using Jenkins pipeline, GitHub Actions, whatever, in order to build your environments. But take all of those building blocks, all of those components, and say that this is my blueprint. All right? I want to take this blueprint and create a repeatable process to deploy this blueprint and enable users to use that. All right? So the first portion is figure out what's the component you need. And the component needs to be something that fulfill a business flow. It's not just an S3 bucket, right? Without the right permissions, without the URL to get there, without the ability to have permissions to upload files in, into there, it's not an S3 bucket. So you need the entire business flow modeled within this blueprint, and then you can enable those blueprints through a scalable self-service to your users. Now, taking those blueprints, connecting them to whatever system that needs environment allows you to suddenly really grow fast, really speed up velocity. And think about that inner loop, right? This is where velocity is really important. We need the developer to have everything they need right there, right, right on their IDE, right on their laptop. That's velocity. But when we are thinking about the outer loop, that's the time to market. 
right? This is the business that needs to deliver something and be a little bit faster than the competitor. So when we think about business processes, we want to take all of the components that are required for a specific business flow, include them all in a blueprint, and then orchestrate them, manage them, and provide them to the end user. Now, just launching an ISC file, regardless if that's Pulumi or Terraform, that's nice. But the ability to manage that throughout the environment lifecycle, that's hard. So this is something we want to provide you on top of the ability to model the environment. Honestly, all you need to do is, is three simple steps. Just think about it. We need to figure out what are the assets. We call that auto discovery. All right? Regardless of what assets you're using, discover them. Bring them in. Make sure everything is governed in the right way so people cannot use uh, that huge RDS that's going to cost a lot of money. All right? And then use the, the notion of repeatable blueprints to deliver those into your end users. Now, the ability to model those blueprints, orchestrate them, provide them, enable them uh, for the end users allows a lot of flexibility throughout the STLC processes because the developer can now launch an environment directly from his IDE because everything is modeled. Honestly, the DevOps or the platform team doesn't need to know about it. It's already modeled. It's already approved. All the policies are in there. So just one click, and you have the environment. But then Jenkins used to launch those Terraform files, right? Instead of launching the Terraform files and, and then the Helm files and then uh, uh, you know, tweak something with, with monitoring and some secrets, just launch the environment exactly as the developer is doing, because the, the environment was built for a business flow. Jenkins can roll out changes directly into that environment using this uh, repeatable blueprint uh, uh, con context. And now what's really important is that instead of having a huge, what I like to call DevOps monolith, right? you take Terraform, you, pi you, you add more and more and more and more and more, and then you need to trigger Helm, and you need to do some validation. You got, the, you got a huge model, module over there. Instead of thinking this way, start thinking in a building block notion. So you can take that RDS module, the S3 module. You can take your Helm chart, combine them all together into one blueprint, and that's it. You can deploy it once. You have three different building blocks. Think about it as microservices for DevOps, right? It's not a huge monolith anymore. It's microservices. Each and every one of them might be maintained by a different team with different expertise. But now you don't need to care about everything. You can think about the microservice that's doing only S3 and the ACL in order to make sure that's working. So that's all, that's all for me. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, please come visit us in booth 3052. And that's it.